You've been following me all afternoon. What is it that you want? You talk funny. Yes, thank you. Lovely chatting. She's alive. Alive! I... I have created life. Frankenstein Through the Eyes of the Monster was a point-and-click adventure game released for the PC in 1995 and also an exclusive European release for the Sega Saturn in 1997. I repeat, this was released for the Sega Saturn in 1997. For context, that's the same year the Saturn would receive games like Fighters Mega Mix, Quake, Marvel Super Heroes and Shining the Holy Ark. Just keep that in mind. Look, I'm not gonna mince words here. This game is pretty terrible. And its only saving grace is the fact that it stars the one, the only, Tim Curry. And I for one hold a firm belief that we all need more curry in our lives. <laughs> but sadly not even this legendary actor can save the game from being most likely the worst Saturn game that I own. But we'll get to that. Oh, and yes, I will use Tim Curry as an excuse to cram as many Tim Curry clips as I can. So here we go. The game comes in a pale plastic case release. This was the second design of European Saturn boxes, meaning they are much sturdier and less prone to receive damage, ensuring this abomination of a game is well preserved for future generations to suffer through. The cover is… well, it's Tim Curry. Do you like Tim Curry? Then it's a good cover. Do you not like Tim Curry or do you not know who Tim Curry is? Get the fuck out of my channel! On the back of the box… yeah, it's pretty plain. Inside we find the disc and manual and surprisingly the manual is much better than I expected. I mean, it's just text, but it's way deeper than you might think. It opens up with a few paragraphs exploring the themes of Frankenstein, namely how obsession can lead to self-destruction, followed by details on how to play the game and it even has a basic walkthrough for the first 20 minutes or so of the game, something which is sorely needed considering how obtuse this game is. After that it delves into the Frankenstein mythology and it even gives you an abbreviated life story of Mary Shelley, including her works, her love life, her inspirations for the book, the literature of the time and it even lists a recommendation of several stage plays and movies that star Frankenstein or the monster. I particularly like how it describes 1965's Jesse James meets Frankenstein's daughter, worthy of mention because it may be the worst horror film ever made. I'm afraid you're mistaken, sir. Finally, it ends stating that the 1994 movie, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, is the best Frankenstein movie ever made. I'm afraid you're mistaken, sir. Overall, this is a surprisingly good packaging. I mean, it features Tim Curry on the cover and has a list of recommendations of all movies. So, yeah, this is not bad, actually. The game might be terrible, but the packaging, yeah, it gets a pass from me. Booting up the game, you're given a mix of audio clips that basically inform you that you were accused of murder and hanged for your crimes before waking up to Tim Curry staring at you. Actually, that's not really how it goes. Like, as soon as the game begins, Tim Curry is just staring off into the distance before realizing, oh wait, I have a dead body here. Also, I don't know if it's just me, but it kind of feels like Tim Curry is just phoning it in and underacting in this one, but doing so in a way that only Tim Curry could ever do. She's alive. Alive! I, I have created life. I don't know, I just feel that if you had just created life, you'd probably be a bit happier than this. From here on out, you're able to explore the mansion, and that is when the realization hit me that this isn't just any old point and click adventure game, but instead this is actually a mist clone. This is most likely where I should point out that I don't like mist and I like mist clones even less. Yeah, I know mist was like this immersive, hugely popular game, but me personally, I could never stand how obtuse, cryptic and honestly boring it was. But the issue is that it spawned 
dozens of low-quality clones who thought they could get away with making low-quality cash grabs while being even more cryptic, obtuse and providing unsatisfying puzzles. And in fact, I'm pretty sure that this is what led to the death of the point-and-click adventure genre in the mid to late 90s. But that's just my opinion and I have nothing to back up my statement. Anyway, you play as Tim Curry's monster, which to be fair is a pretty original take on Frankenstein. As the monster you cannot speak and instead rely only on your inner monologues. Though it feels that this was made so as to limit the amount of recording sessions required with Tim Curry, as all of his dialogue consists of nothing more of him staring and talking to the camera, which would explain why it feels like he's just phoning it in. And in fact, Frankenstein seems oddly uninterested in you, like he literally just brought you to life, does a low-key celebration and then just sits at his desk and ignores you. No, seriously, you can click on him but he'll just keep ignoring you. You'd think he'd pay more attention to the walking corpse he just revived. Once I finally gained control of my character, I came upon my first red flag of the game and that is that this game is just one big maze. And that is not an exaggeration, literally the entire game is just a singular gigantic maze. You see, you can use the cursor to move up, left, right or down, but you can also use the shoulder buttons to face left or right. So this means that for every spot on the map you can access it and view it from four different angles, most of which are useless. Because of this it's incredibly easy to get lost. Sometimes you're standing on the same spot you were before, but because you're facing a different direction you have no idea that you're actually there. This also makes it very easy to miss items or important spots simply because you might be viewing them from the wrong angle or you're at an angle where you cannot access them from that screen. So now imagine that for the entire mansion. It does not matter if you're on a doctor's lab, the tower, on a corridor, a hallway, the dining hall, gardens, whatever. You're forced to explore every screen from every possible angle to ensure that you did not miss anything. Now add to that, that a lot of the areas in the game are actually legitimate mazes and navigating through the game becomes a nightmare. Like this area where every wall and corridor look the same. So you just kinda gotta get some pen and paper and draw your own maps if you want to progress through the game. I mean, heck, I actually went into this area that I discovered by pure chance and then spent the next 20 minutes trying to find an exit. But no, I was so lost that I had no idea where I came from or where I was going. And yes, that's the other issue, it's so easy to lose your sense of direction. You can enter a new screen without having any idea of where you came from, from the left, the bottom or maybe any other direction. So because of that I had to restart the game and I avoided that area, but I can't help but feel like all of this could have been easily avoided with a minimap. And honestly, this is what kills the game for me. Yes, there are other issues, but this one is what kills it. Because every action, every move, every direction feels like it's short to me. It feels like you're being punished. Because the thing is, it's very easy to become frustrated and lose your patience while exploring the castle. So much of it just looks the same and in fact screens often get reused from different locations which only add to the confusion. And to make matters worse, there's really nothing to see in the castle. It's always just a series of empty rooms with no one to talk to. Yes. There are no servants or side characters to interact with, it's just you all by your lonesome self. I don't know, I guess I just expected Frankenstein to at least have a butler or something. I'm not the butler, but I'm a butler, in fact I was his butler. I mean, yes, if you're lucky, Tim Curry might jump in at a predetermined point, but those are few and far between. And like I mentioned before, all he does is basically just talk to the camera and then promptly walk out. Actually, it is pretty funny to see all all the creative ways they find to get Tim to enter and then leave a scene. Modesty be damned! I am a genius! 
Like, what is that? Why did he just get up, boast about himself to you, the monster, and then sit right back down? Or how about this one? What is he even doing? Like, is he playing hide and seek? It's too bad you missed it. Eat what's left. Yes, I too like to turn my back to people and then just stand still when I talk to them. The problem is that this is quite literally the only entertainment I get out of this game. But there just isn't enough of it. Because for each minute or so of Tim Curry goodness, you spend like 20 minutes just wandering around the mansion not knowing what to do or where to go. And yes, that's another problem. The game is extremely vague on what you need to actually do and even more so on how you should get around to doing that. The good news is that most puzzles are actually super simple and can be solved in just one screen. Like this one where I can pick up a bunch of random items on the same screen and so long as I put them all on the table in the correct order, I solve a puzzle that I didn't even know existed. I mean, yeah, I flew a kite, but I did not know that I needed to fly a kite in the first place or what I even did this for. I literally only stumbled upon this solution by randomly clicking on things and realizing something was happening. But that's really how you go about most puzzles in this game. Like for example, I was at the tower and saw that I had to climb down to go to the lower levels. But I had no idea how to get there. But I also found these iron balls and an elevator. So I pick up the balls and put it on the elevator which breaks a gargoyle. Turns out that if I click the gargoyle, I can drag this white line around, but if I leave the screen, your character will automatically drop the line. But if I leave towards the right side of the screen, then I can tie the line to a balcony and use that rope to climb down. Now here's the issue, how the heck was I supposed to know that this was a rope? I quite literally only clicked on a broken gargoyle, and I did not see anything hinting that there was a rope there. If the character drops the rope when we move to the wrong screen, then how about giving us a hint that we can drag the rope to a different screen if we move in the right direction. But again, because all the items I needed for the solution were just 3 screens apart, it did not take much for me to stumble onto the correct answer. But the issue is that it relies so much on trial and error as well as blind luck that you'll stumble onto the right thing by complete accident. I mean, heck, you don't even get an inventory until you're like a quarter of the way through the game. No, seriously, every item you pick up is used almost instantly and it's not until later that you'll find the bag to store your stuff. I mean, God, who designed these puzzles? Are you trying to make me look stupid in front of the other guests? Don't need any help from me, sir. And for a game that is trying to be unsettling, it actually ends up being more silly than scary. Like how both you and the doctor refer to a cooked turkey leg as dead tissue. Dead tissue. So, what do you do with this dead tissue? Well, you try to revive it, of course. Man, that is some Looney Tunes logic right there. And when that fails, your character simply decides to eat this old ass cold turkey leg that you experimented on. Like, jeez, at least put some mustard on that thing. When I want mustard, I want mustard. Oh, and there's actually a portion of the game where you're not supposed to do anything. You just need to wait for time to pass, so you're just mindlessly walking around the mansion for a solid 10 minutes with nothing to do. Now, doesn't that sound like like fun to you? <laughs> Events are moving so fast! Now, the good news is that the game is mercifully short. If you follow a walkthrough, you can actually complete it in just 2 to 3 hours. The bad news is that you'll most likely get bored and quit long before then. Honestly, I was at a point where I was just glad Tim Curry drew a gun and shot me. Just put me out of my misery. There's an insane guest! Overall, this game is just not worth it. This is a low quality mist clone that is riddled with mazes, an unintuitive navigation system, cryptic level design, unsatisfying puzzles, lack of characters to interact with, and honestly, very little Tim Curry for the experience you get. And considering how linear the game is, you're honestly just better off watching a walkthrough on YouTube. Now, if you actually want to buy this game for your collection, well, first off, God help you. But you can buy it on eBay for Jesus. Yeah, don't get this game. Just, just don't. It's not a good game. It's not worth the price. And the Sega Saturn has a lot of great games. So just get those instead.
I mean, just seriously? I bought my copy in Portugal back when people were practically giving Saturn games away. And even then I only got this game because of Tim Curry. But no, just no. Do not buy this game. I'm sorry, I'm not usually like this, but I just cannot recommend this game. I really wish I could have enjoyed this game. I definitely wanted to see more Tim Curry. But this game is just not for me. I'm not even sure if it's for anyone. But I did at least learn a valuable lesson. And that is that the true monster isn't Frankenstein or his creation. It is in fact whoever designed this game. Hey everyone, thank you for watching Stickage Retro Corner. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell and share this video. All that fun social media stuff. And you can also support me on Patreon. It may not seem like it, but even one dollar is a really big help in keeping this channel going. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Bye! Will you just try and stay cool?